Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Baijiu's exam prep. My name is Alpa Sharma, and this is our editorial analysis. Very good morning, Priya, Aditi, Asmita, Falguni, Akansha. Can you hear and see me clearly, everybody? Good morning. Am I clearly audible and visible to everyone? Yes. Good morning. Good morning, Adit. Oh, I see you for the first time here, Adit. Hi, Kinza. Hi, Shrishti. All right, guys. So, 17th of June today. And uh, as I had promised to you in the last few weeks, that I will make sure that I take one Aeon article at least every week. Here it is. So, we are going to be doing only and only one article today and the article is from the Aeon. And all those people who did not attend my uh, paid batch class yesterday who are live right now, let me tell you a couple of things. One, that it's an Aeon article unlike the other Aeon articles that you've probably ever seen. Yes, as I had promised. This article... You know, the, the CIT in your heart, it needs to come out now. Okay, so the article talks about law. One of our favorite topics, one of our favorite sources. And this is one of those articles which rarely happens that doesn't need editing. Because in itself, this article isn't really long. So it's icing on the cake. It's not a very long article. It's from the Aeon and it's on law. I just could not miss out on this article for my editorial classes. No, 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 Priya, no. Not the one on Smite. So, it's an older article. It did not appear very recently. It's an older article. So, very, very likely you missed out on the article. And we're going to be discussing that in detail. But I can assure you, you're going to love reading that article. Okay, good morning, everyone. Yes, just a minute. And uh, we'll be doing what all, uh, what all will we do in the class? We'll take out the vocabulary. We're going to memorize the words. We'll discuss the tone of the author summary. It's easy. You'll not have a problem understanding the summary, I'm sure. And in the end, we'll look at important articles from various sources of various newspapers. So that's the agenda of the class. So shall we start with the vocabulary, everyone? Shall I show you the vocabulary? Here we go. So here's the first slide for vocabulary from the article that I've brought from the Aeon. The first slide. The first word is exonerated. So in exoneration, it's basically acquitting somebody. So acquittal is when you make somebody free of all the charges and blames, right? But then the difference between an acquittal and exoneration is acquittal usually uh, pertains to an official legal case. But exoneration is, it doesn't necessarily have to be an official legal case. It can be any kind of blame on you. And then after a little bit of research, you, it's found out that you're not guilty and you are being exonerated. So exoneration is making somebody blame free uh, or putting away all the faults that were there on his shoulders. Making that person free of that is exoneration. And inquiry exonerated those involved. So this inquiry made these people free of blames and faults. No, Kushi, it is not. You can take a print, color, uh, black and white printout as well. Okay. Hi, Anil, I'm absolutely good. No, Kaveri, no. Neither that. Okay, I'll tell you something. See, this article will keep you on your toes till the end. It's I told you, the CID in your heart has to come out. We are Indian babies, right? We're born in India and we've seen CID so much. It has to come out of your heart here. That's what the article is going to talk about, okay? The next word is adjust. So adjust is when you uh, blame somebody, when you criticize somebody, when you ask somebody to uh, make some payment because you are a defaulter, because you are a wrongdoer, that's adjust. So adjudication is a related word here. The defaulter was adjudged to pay the whole amount. He was criticized and asked to pay this amount. So when there's a wrongdoing that you do and you're asked to repay for that, that's uh, adjust here. Word number two. The third word, nifty. Nifty, not the nifty that relates to the stock market. 
that's a different one this nifty is being very skilled very deft i'll write the word here deft okay very skilled very deft very uh, clever and uh, effective is nifty so that's the third word okay the last word for this slide is innocuous innocuous is innocent not harmful not offensive plain not derogatory not targeting anyone is innocuous so i can call it harmless it was an innocuous question it was a harmless question it wasn't intended to harm anyone or upset anyone that's innocuous slide number 1 i hope you get all the words take a very quick screenshot it is okay it's real aditi it's related to determine but then uh, it's more of asking you to repay or make a payment or make a give a penalty that's what a justice okay not judge but more close to paying a penalty i hope you've taken a screenshot of this slide everyone let's move to the next slide and that's the last slide slide number 2 unscathed so when there's an accident probably that's an example there's an accident and the passengers come out unharmed that unharmed situation is unscathed so i'll write this down here unharmed unscathed is no injury happened no suffering happened you came out victorious i came through all those perils unscathed you weren't harmed here is unscathed that's the second last word of the slide and the last word we see here is an ordeal so my entire article that i've brought today just a minute talks about trial by ordeal let's understand let me just uh, find a comfortable place to sit in okay so trial by ordeal i'm going to talk to you about this term a little before i show you the actual article and your ability to understand this phrase is very very important so that you're able to understand the article as well for people who don't attend this session attending hindu class regularly is totally <laughs> you know that's uh, uh, the other way around attending hindu classes daily is innocuous yet very very helpful okay so now understand what is trial by ordeal if you talk about years and years and years back when technology wasn't so advanced the entire judiciary would be dependent on god how can judiciary dependent on god we've read about the greek mythology the roman culture and we've seen the presence of judiciary there as well hundreds and hundreds of years back but there was a presence of god how was it visible how was it present let's understand that so there was an ideology that said trial by ordeal there are different kinds of trials that happen right so the trial could be by a bench the trial could be by a single judge various kinds of trials our country what's the most prominent uh, process of trials who's going to answer this what are the usual ways in which trials happen who's going to answer this anyone how does a trial happen in our country jury yeah exactly so there's a bench that sits and then there's a trial that goes on you argue and then the jury argues and then they come up with the verdict in the end okay now in the older times uh, specifically in the european culture when the evidence was low the trial of by ordeal was followed the trial by ordeal said that the person on which acquisition has been put the offender has to go through physical pain that would torment his body and if he comes out unscathed after the physical pain he survives brilliantly after that tormented round of pain that means you are acquitted 
Sounds like a very vague idea of judgment. Of course, yes. Now, this entire theory dependent on God helping you. Now, God knows what you've done. So, if God puts, so if you are put through pain, for example, uh, you've been asked to, like, like it's like an Agni Pariksha. Okay, so you've been asked to walk on uh, hot burning coal and you just cross it without being burnt. God has saved you because you are innocent. But if you burn down, then it's more like you are the culprit. So that's the idea of trial by ordeal. Okay, judge and jury. Exactly. So it could be judge and jury both. So Adit, uh, I'll tell you something very interesting here since we're talking about judge and jury before I show you the article. Uh I recently read an article, a very interesting one, that told us about Australia giving us a liberty. So if you're an Australian resident, it gives you a liberty to choose between the judge and the bench for trial. You could, you as an accused can choose who is going to give your verdict, how the trial is going to happen. Is it going to be by a judge or is it going to be by a bench? You have a choice. What would you choose had you been an Australian resident? What would you choose? A bench or a judge? Considering you're guilty. Hmm? Which one would you choose? Okay, there are no answers. Judge, of course, I would go for the same. If I am guilty, why would I choose an entire bench? Who probably is going to find out I am guilty. I will choose a judge. It's easier to manipulate one person than to manipulate an entire team. So, we are going to be talking about the trial by ordeal in detail and it's a very interesting piece of article. But before I show you that, if you're targeting CLAT 2023, a comprehensive combo course has been launched. Quickly enroll yourself for this program. Don't wait because you don't have a lot of time left. CLAT 23 is right around the corner. Not 22 but 23, okay? Now, read the page and send me a done. Once you're done reading the page, okay? Just send me down when you're done reading this page. So it says if there are charges on somebody and the evidence is low, there are only two ways of knowing who the guilty is. Because the evidence is low, either the defendant himself openly admits to being guilty or else the God above knows. There are only two people who know it, right? The defendant himself and the God above because God watches everything. But the chances of the defendant himself agreeing to it openly that I am the wrongdoer is extremely rare. So, in the older times, where would the trial go to? They would go to the God. God, please help us find out the culprit. Because the defendant himself would not agree to it. And the guess game cannot go on. So who is guilty, who is not? Either the defendant himself agrees to it or the God replies. And they resorted to God answering because the defendant usually would not reply here. Okay. So, but then... Can that even happen? I mean, logical reasoning says that cannot happen. Science says that cannot happen. God can't answer. Let's see where it goes. For more than 400 years, this exactly was followed. God was asked 
God, please tell us who the culprit is. And God would answer and they would find the culprit. 400 years, God answered to them. But how? The entire legal system asked God to inform them about defendant's criminal status through ordeal. That is judicial ordeal. What was judicial ordeal? I have already explained. We'll repeat that through this paragraph. Judicial ordeal took several forms where a person uh, who was a defendant was put through physical torture and pain. And if, it, if he came out victorious, unscathed, then he was innocent. What were the kinds of pain he would be put through? So, it could be dunking him into a pool of holy water, walking him barefoot across burning plowshares. Plowshares are basically uh, made of iron, okay? So, walking on these hot iron uh, plowshares barefoot. And then, the most popular ones were putting, dunking your hat, hand into boiling water or carrying a burning iron in your hand and walking, okay? So, in this boiling water where you dunked your hand, you had to fish out. Uh, so, you had to put your hand into the cauldron. Cauldron is basically a kettle, a boiling kettle. And you had to fish out a ring. And if your hand, after a few days, was completely fine, unburned, it was said that God protected you. What do you think about this trial, everyone? That's the whole idea. Everyone was proven guilty then. But then, Adit, do you remember the title of the passage? It said... The trial by ordeal was actually an effective test. If everyone was proven guilty, how could this be an effective test? Probably there's something we're missing out on. Now is the time to bring your CID minds out. Basically torturing the defendant into confessing. Okay. But then Ashi, that's a good guess. You think it's nonsense, but the author thinks it's an effective test of guilt. We need to find out what's the hidden technique here. So basically all these are examples of the torture the person would be put through judicial ordeals. And how would they be checked after a week if your hand is completely fine? That's not possible. If you dunk your hand into boiling water, it's going to be burnt. Science says it's going to be burnt. And then science and technology wasn't so advanced at that time where you could put some ointment on your hand and your hand would not be burnt and XYZ things. No, it wasn't so advanced at that time. So, probably everybody was found guilty. But there was a catch. Let's find out what the catch was. Judicial ordeals were administered and adjusted by priests. Of course, since you are praying to God to tell you who the culprit is, there has to be an appearance of this uh, protagonist and that's the priest. So, this would happen in the, in the church during special masses. And when it was happening during masses, that means you have a crowd looking up to you. So the chances of cheating is negligible. There's a crowd and there's a priest and then there's a defendant who would be asked to dunk his hand into boiling water or walk through plowshares, burning plowshares. But if you come out unscathed, you are victorious. You are acquitted and this will be checked by the priest in front of the entire mass. During such a mass, the priest requested God to reveal to the court the defendant's guilt. Pretty much dramatic. So you would pray to the God, God, please. It's like, you know, you playing uh, this uh, kid game and trying to call the spirit. Spirit, please come in here. God, please help us find the culprit. It's like that. But then there's no logic in it. And then uh, you would pray to God to help you find the guilty or the innocent. Through the ordeal, letting boiling water or burning iron burn the defendant if he was guilty and saving him with the miracle if you were innocent. That means they believed in miracles here. The idea that God would respond to a priest's request in this way reflected a popular medieval belief according to which the ordeals were this phrase. Basically, this phrase is a Latin term for uh, judgment by God. So now, since God knew everything, who is the guilty and who is the uh, basically acquitted one. God knows everything. And what better than asking God himself who the culprit is? So that's what they believed in. Judgment of God. If you were burned, God wants you to be punished. If you're not burned, God wants you to be saved. 
that was the whole idea of judgment by the god now i have questions ah Kirti, did you start the class from the beginning? Dia, that's the question. It's illogical. It's a horror plot. But if something happened like this to me, like walking on burning plowshares, even if I was not guilty, I would have said, Judge, I didn't just arrest me. Okay, but why would you do that? Dia and everyone else, you guys are missing out on a very important hint here. And the hint is, if this trial could survive for good 400 years, it was implicit that everybody unanimously had supreme trust on God. Do you see that here? It survived for good 400 years. And it according to the author, was an effective tool. We could find the culprit. That means, and that people were possibly agreeing to the decision. It shows the supreme trust people had during that time on God. That's exactly the why I would not say unnecessarily that I am the wrongdoer if I am innocent because I trust God. I would walk through the plowshares because if I trust God, I know God is going to save me. That was one of the hidden assumptions here. Okay, now let's go on. Let's see, we are still missing out on something. We are still unable to decide why is this whole methodology Oh, a perfect way of finding the accused. Okay, let's see. Let's move on. So, till now we've understood that it was the idea of judgment of God. That God knows everything and God is going to decide who to burn and who to save. Getting God to judge the guilt or innocence of crime defendants is a pretty nifty trick. He calls it a very smart trick. That means there is a trick. We don't know if you could pull it off. That means we had to pull off a trick here. But how could medieval European courts accomplish this trick? Let's try to find an answer to this trick. They say rather easily they could pull off the trick. Now we know the answer. Suppose you are a medieval European who has been accused of stealing your neighbor's cat. The court thinks you might have committed the theft. But then the court is not sure because they don't have enough of evidence. So the court says go on, undergo the trial by ordeal. By boiling water. Dip your hand into it. Not dip. Dunk your hand into it. Fish out for the ring. If you are able to, you are victorious. Like other medieval Europeans, you believe in this. That is, you believe in the power of the judgment of God. You have strong belief in God. If you have strong belief in God, you would happily follow the trial by ordeal. Everybody did that for good 400 years. A priest would come in, he would pray, he would do appropriate rituals, he would call on to God for revealing the truth and he would also ask God to perform a miracle if the person is innocent and save you from burning if you are innocent and if you are the culprit to burn you down to rags. He would pray to God for that. Okay, So that was the entire process and court ordered this. If you undergo the, now here is the answer. Now probably you will find the answer here. If you undergo the ordeal, God says you are guilty. Your hand is burnt. You have to pay a large fine. If he says you are innocent, then you are cleared of the charge and you pay nothing. Alternatively, you can avoid the trial of ordeal by admitting to your crime even before the ordeal started and paying a smaller fine. Then this actual one that was supposed to be paid after you were found guilty by the trial of ordeal. If you are guilty, what will you do? What will you do my children if you are guilty? These are mind games. Exactly. So if you are guilty, what would you do? You would think, oh my god, I am guilty. I, if I have to go through the trial of ordeal, I'll burn my hand. 
and then god knows because i'm guilty so i'll burn my hand and then pay a huge amount why not pay a small amount in the beginning and confess for the crime that i've committed i'll save my hand and a lot of amount of money bhagwan ke bina oh <laughs> okay just confess and pay the small amount right so that's exactly what the mind game here was suppose you're guilty and you know you stole your neighbor's cat and so does god god obviously knows it right so in this case you expect that if you undergo the ordeal god will let you burn down and thus you have to pay the large fine rather you would confess and pay the small amount and save your hand and save a lot of money as well but there's another catch here this another catch that if i am innocent i would agree to go by the trial of ordeal i would still burn my hand how do i find innocent people i can find the guilty through this process how can i find innocent people this process was an effective one according to the author let's try to understand how did they find the innocent ones but before i tell you who the innocent ones did you like the video did you share the video if you haven't done that please do that right now click on the like button click on the share button click on the subscribe button if you haven't done that yet okay now let's see if somebody is innocent how do you save them you know you did not steal your neighbor's cat and again god also knows that so you trust god and in this case you expect that if you undergo the ordeal god is going to save you thus you don't have to pay the fine and you'll keep your hand intact but how will god save you logic does not say that this is better than if you confess to stealing the cat in which case you have to pay the fine or the theft you did commit so if you're innocent you'll undergo the ordeal obviously but how will god save you let's try to find the answer to it did you catch the trick did you catch the trick everyone i'll show you what the trick is who would uh, monitor the entire process the priest would right so the priest because if of you believe in this process judgment by god the specter of the ordi leads you to choose one way if you're guilty confess and the other if you're innocent undergo the ordeal so they were simple if somebody was guilty he would confess if somebody was not he would go through the ordeal that means the priest now knows a person choosing to go through the process of ordeal is an innocent one now i think it's clear in front of you what the catch was by asking god to out you the legal system incentivizes you to out yourself pretty nifty indeed how do you out yourself you basically go through the ordeal because you trust god here there's just one hitch while only an innocent defendant will choose to undergo the ordeal which allows the court to learn that he is innocent how do you save his hand you save his hand by administering priest make boiling water in so basically you the involvement of the priest here for administering the entire process of the ordeal since the priest was the one administering it he could play with the temperature of water he could play with the verdict that was the hidden catch here he will akansha exactly that's the point if he is innocent he certainly will do the task but since the court now already knows he is innocent because he decided to choose the task it's the court and the priest's responsibility now to save him not the gods it's the courts and the priest's responsibility to save him let's see how the priest saved him there was an instruction manual for the priests that was followed before this entire process began let's see what the priests did the fire used to heat the water was prepared in private so the priest can alter the temperature he had ample of time to cool the fire the priest sprinkled holy water over the water boiling water in the ordeal cauldron the cauldron is the kettle okay so by sprinkling holy water you can cool the water down you can decide how much water to sprinkle or just pour a lot of water on it you can make the water cool down and then 
the ordeal cauldron was removed from the fire at a point during the mass and the defendant wasn't tested until the priest was done praying. So the priest could just pray on and on and on till the time the water is to a bearable temperature. And ordeal observers were placed at a respectable distance. So they can't even peep into the cauldron to see how boiling the water is. They were far away. The priest knew you were innocent because you chose the trial by ordeal. The priest could cool the water down through various steps. The instruction manuals suggested. Enabling the priest to carry out his manipulations undetected. Did I mention that it was the priest who adjusted the ordeal's final outcome? After one week. So even if your hand was burnt, he would say, no, no, it's not burnt a lot. It's only minor burns. Possibly you're innocent. So the priest would come up with the verdict in the end. He could play his own fair share of games and he could save you. Now there's a question. The priest could be bribed. If this trick was known by the people, everybody would choose to go by the trial of ordeal. Right? Now the idea is that if this is the case, you guys are missing out on the same assumption I had mentioned in the beginning. Supreme trust on God. You forgot that. It was the fact that you believed in the existence of God and the designation the priest held in the society that you would not, nobody would dare do anything against the wishes of God because you were fearful of God. And it was the fear of the priest and the God and the Almighty. And that's why this process lasted for a good 400 years. So the idea of bribing or everybody knowing it was negligible. Okay? And there was not one priest who would do it because there was trust in God that God would save you. But the story goes on. Let's see that. The miraculous result was thus practically assured. There's some data. In 13th century, 208 defendants were asked to undergo the hot iron ordeal. Nearly two thirds came out unscathed by red hot irons they carried. There could be two reasons. Either the priest playing games or the God probably himself trying to protect you because you were innocent. So, either God really did intervene to reveal the defendant's innocent or the priest made sure that the iron they carried wasn't hot. There were only two ways. But two-thirds of people came out victorious and one-third were burnt. Now, why were they burnt? We don't know. Possibly God wanted them to be burnt. In practice, this might not have mattered whether the ordeal were truly God's judgment or the judgment of a clever legal system. We don't know. But for either case, what we know is the result was the same. And that was improve criminal justice. Not perfect maybe, but improved. Thanks to God. So that was the article. It's a... Uh, Via this method, they increase the people's trust in God. That's true as well. I would not comment on the meaningless word. But yes, the trust on God increased. That God is watching everything and God is going to help us. Okay. And you see the last line, thanks to God. It's a pun here. It's more like a sarcasm. Because possibly God did not do anything. Possibly God did. We don't care. We have a cleverer uh, legal system. Just that. Now, that was the only article we would be doing today. You have a homework. The summary is too easy. You don't have to write down the summary. The tone is a little tricky one. That's what your homework is. In the comment section, not in the chat box right now, in the comment section under my video, you have to write down the tone of the author. If you've loved the article, you can comment that as well. If you've loved the class, you could do that as well. And do not forget, Sunday 19th June 6 p.m. We have our detailed exam analysis for CLAT 2022 by Srinivas sir and Nivedita ma'am. Don't forget to watch it live. 
that is all for the class everyone and i'm going to be sharing today's hindu and indian express in the background and we'll see what is important today that we need to read and what is that we need we can skip okay so everyone the class is done i'm just sharing today's hindu and indian express in the background and we'll see what is that we need to read i don't know kinza and they are not here not in the chat box in the comment section under my video okay sharing today's hindu and indian express everyone here we go just a minute guys yeah found it okay so let's have a look at the hindu today and let's see what's important skim through this one oh the federal reserve you can read this in detail and please leave this skim through this one ah oh, it actually is becoming an endemic just skim through this one bit i think you should read this in detail it's a very good one if you guys have not been following what the crypto market is and why mayur all the best everyone who's sitting for class 2022 i know you're going to come out victorious it is a trial by ordeal here everyone but you're going to sail through and you have my blessings with you just relax have a good night's sleep and give in your best shot my blessings will always 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 be there with you make us and yourself proud all the best everyone may the luck be with you okay so here we go with the newspaper ahead if you don't know what's happening with the crypto market please read this article in detail it will explain everything to you and then here we have this guy okay the audacity of regional films don't read this okay let's have a look at the aeon if any new article has come up ah yes yes read this okay this is the new article please read this one so that's all i think for today thank you so much everyone have a very good day guys god bless you bye everyone i shall see you after class happens